Good morning, everybody. Uh, uh, I am delighted to welcome you to the first uh, ACB Macroprudential Stress Testing Conference. This conference that we try to, to do it uh, uh, biannually intends uh, to support research on macroprudential stress testing and provide an opportunity for researchers and policymakers to present and consider the latest thinking in the field. This conference uh, also represents uh, an important step in the context of the analyt analytical work on stress testing carried out by the ECB, also in cooperation with the national authorities. The goal is to operationalize state-of-the-art methodologies and academic research on stress testing, risk analysis, and policy impact assessments, and develop common and consistent stress testing tools, leveraging on practical experience, academic research, and on the anal analytical capabilities already available at the different institutions. In my remarks today, I will cover three aspects of recent developments related to stress testing. First, I will briefly reflect on the evolution of stress testing as a policy tool and on the main characteristics which should be included in macroprudential stress testing analytical exercises. Second, I will detail the macroprudential stress testing framework, which was recently developed at the ECB. And I will also illustrate a policy assessment exercise which has been lately carried out relying on this setting. Finally, I will mention some further progresses which are needed in the context of macroprudential stress testing to further enhance the analytical toolkit which is essential to support policy analysis in Europe. As you know, since the financial crisis, stress tests have become an important tool for central banks and banking supervisors and have been used for different goals. During the financial crisis, stress tests were used mainly as a crisis solution tools aiming at identifying capital shortfalls in the banking sector and enhancing market discipline through the publication of consistent and granular data on a bank by bank level. In more recent years, stress tests have rather served the purpose of crisis prevention, aiming to identify vulnerabilities in the financial system and to assess the resilience of the banking sector and individual banks to adverse macrofinancial shocks. In recent years, the ECB has developed an overarching macroprudential stress testing framework, which, relying both on macroeconomic and bank level data, is able to model the interdependency between the financial sector and the real economy, as well as cross-country spillovers via trade linkages. Thanks to its semi-structural features, it accounts for a number of nonlinear amplification mechanisms, which are featured by the financial sector during periods of stress, such as deleveraging, surges in risk premia, and credit crunches. This framework models uh, the, the economies of the 19 countries of the euro area and banks' behavioral reactions to adverse conditions and is very well able to capture the heterogeneity of the euro area banking system. Banks, as you know, can endogenously adjust the size and composition of the balance sheet, modify their dividend policies, and reset, and reset their, their interest rates on both loans and deposits in response to economic conditions and depending on their own characteristics such as solvency, asset quality, profitability, and balance sheet structure. The macroprudential stress testing exercise, which produces both bank level and banking sector projections, can be exploited to analyze medium-term medium prospects of the banking sector and used to conduct policy assessments. It was recently used in combination with a growth at risk approach to assess the macroeconomic costs and benefits of the finalization of the Basel III agreement in cooperation with the European Banking Authority. This analytical structure can also help us with the calibration of macroprudential policies. For instance, it shows how the timing of the introduction of a capital-based policy matters for its effectiveness. When the new policy is phased in, in good times, banks are able to build up additional capital by retaining their profits and do not need to shrink their loan books to improve capital ratios. On the other hand, 
At the onset of a slowdown, the phase-in of a new capital policy is likely to trigger a reduction in credit rate and put an additional drag on the economy. Bad timing aggravates the costs of macroprudential and regulatory interventions and can limit their effectiveness. The DCB is continuing to invest resources to push ahead the research frontier on macroprudential stress testing. At the current stage, we are working to extend our analyt analytical toolkit in at least two main dimensions. First, we have engaged in the development of a comprehensive analytical construction for carrying out a climate risk stress test analysis. This framework will allow us to study the potential impact of climate-related uh, risks for the euro area banking sector, as well as the impact of fiscal and financial policies to address climate change-related concerns. The analysis will investigate, in particular, the system-wide materiality of the risks related to the transition to a low-carbon economy for bank solvency and lending capacity, also looking at the implications for the overall economy. Work on the impact of increases in physical risk will follow to complement the work on the transition risk. Second, in cooperation with staff from the national central banks of the Eurosystem, we are working on the development of an analytical stress testing system able to capture the interactions between banks and non-banks financial institutions. This endeavor is of particular importance given the material growth of the non-bank financial sector in the last years and due to the possible risks which could stem from this part of the financial system. This new framework should allow us to take into account both direct and indirect contagion mechanisms, liquidity and solvency restructions, dynamic balance sheet developments, as well as endogenous reactions. It should help to reveal vulnerabilities in the non-bank financial sector and assess the potential for spillovers, most notably due to fire sales. Let me conclude. Since the financial crisis, the importance of stresses as a pol policy tool has been increasing. Macroprudential stress tests are a tool to assess the capacity of the financial sector to withstand adverse macrofinancial developments without reducing the extension of credit to the real economy. They are used to inform macroprudential policy discussions and to carry out policy assessments. Against this background, DCB has developed its own macroprudential stress testing framework which relies on state-of-the-art models and which is increasingly used for policy work. However, as I mentioned already, further progress is needed to maintain our analytical toolkit at the frontier and enhance its usefulness in policy analysis. This conference, which will focus in particular on the implications of stress testing on banks' behavior, macroprudential stress testing as a policy tool, system-wide stress testing, and stress testing of non-bank -bank financial institutions, is a great opportunity for DCB to encourage research on macroprudential policies and foster cooperation in this top on this topic with other institutions and the academia. I wish you all a very fruitful conference. Thank you very much.